Hello, and welcome back to the Power Podcast. Boom. Shakalaka. So, today... <laughs> Started? Yeah, 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 start. <laughs> okay. Hey. We're back. Um, so, this one's going to be kind of an interesting one, because we're actually not going to be talking about... Really... It's not... Okay, this episode is this episode, and quite frankly, uh, most of the episodes in this in this sort of structure are not going to be massively revolutionary. I don't think we have any particular controversial thoughts about this, so we'll just get into this. This episode is terrakinesis, aka earth manipulation, earth bending, or Terran kinetic manipulation. You can move around gr- ground such as earth, rock, dirt, cement, gravel, minerals such as crystals and the like. Now, we're not going to be talking about metal manipulation, and there's a reason why, because we're doing it at some point. But we are going to talk about just power. The, the, the whole earth, dirt, and rock kind of scenario. Um, there's an argument for this, and I will come up. Well, I'll talk to you guys about it in a little bit. But this, this one, this one particular. Um, what do you think on this one? Um. Well, actually, you know what? I, I, it's semi-controversial. I think that terrakinesis is underused. In fact, I don't think that its full potential is uh, really showcased a lot. I mean, when it is, it is kind of interesting and it's really OP and stuff, but I think like the best example of it we got was in Avatar The Last Airbender. And like there really isn't like that you know, many other explorations of it. And I just think that that's a shame, because there's like, it's such, it's got such versatility and so much possibilities and it's like, yeah, yeah I don't want to do Earth, that sounds boring, you just move soil. Yeah. Wrong. Wrong, I say to you, person I made up for this argument. Wrong viewer, who is specifically from... thinking this uh, a controversial thought. <laughs> Dan's brought that up. They did, like, Tara. Okay, well... I think I can beat... Te- Tara, 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 yeah. I can beat all the Teen Titans at one point. Uh, okay, so here's actually what I was going to say about this. The thing is about terrakinesis, the thing is about Earth manipulation, it's like... It's so common. Like other than other than water and uh, other than water and air, it's one of the most common materials. Like dirt, rock, freaking mud. You can just you can use it in almost any location, and so long as your range is good enough, you can make it burrow through any location that you're currently in. Um, it's. It's probably one of the most as 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 um as Alex you just said is probably one of the most underused, and quite frankly, I would like to see it used more. However, I am going to say this in the Avatar show in well, the Avatar Last Airbender or or Legend of Korra, we do see it being used quite often. And again, we're not going to talk about metal manipulation, but I will say this: it here, it, other than that, it has been utilized in so many different ways, and it is it is incredible to see, because theoretically, it has so many different possibilities that it actually is almost a limitless power. Obviously, there are the limits of what you know element you can control, but in the terms of like how many different things that you can do with it is quite possibly insane. Also, like, in contrast to, like, some of the other elements, like, like, fire, it's like, you, it's, you can have so much power at your fingertips, but still, you know, not have it, you know, not have it get out of control as much, because you can just, like, stop and start it, uh, whenever you can. I mean, there, there's no, like, it's not like fire where you can just, like, you know, an errant spark, you know, causes a forest fire without your notice and it goes up in a blaze. Like, no, if an avalanche is coming, you can just, like, you know, bend around you and have it, like, 
you know, go around go around you or onto someone that you dislike. That's also you know, another out possibility. Of, yeah. Out of out of the various one that is the most constructive par as opposed because the other th- the other three, there's not so much way of keeping whatever you're making. Yeah, I mean I, I solid was- I was actually going to say. I was actually going to say it, it, it can be the the least destructive, but technically, that even that's not true. I mean, I'm um, not saying it. I'm not saying it. It can be incredibly destructive. No, 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 no. I'm, no. I'm not saying that. Them. I mean, as in, like, it can be used in a le- in a lot less destructive ways, as well as a lot more destructive ways. But yeah, that's not really the best way of saying it. Yeah, as you say, it's the, it's the one of the most, if not the most, most utility based. No, no, I think no, I think you were right with the right language there. The most constructive out of all of them, because you can literally construct buildings with it. You can make platforms, and if a person is powerful enough, raise continents and countries, land masses, and mountains with it. Hell, if someone's powerful enough, they can manipulate lava with it, and therefore they can bend and manipulate certain factors of an entire island's ecosystem with it. Like... That's another thing. Pull the that... moon to Earth. Uh, <laughs> You're that powerful. Uh, yeah, I mean, the there... Earth of various other locations. There are two. There are two specific arguments for that. The one particular one is that, like, because that the Earth isn't made, because that the Moon is made of potentially different compounds, it it's not. It I mean, might not if be you can affected. Control gemstones and the like, you could probably control moon. It's, it's a, again, it's a dependency on the argument because there are arguments where, say, for instance, certain characters like Terra can only control earth and mud and you know rock, whereas like Earthbenders from uh, my, uh, from um, from Avatar: The Last Earth. Airbender, they have the ability to manipulate anything that is considered earth, mineral, or rock. So theoretically, they might be able to. But again, it really depends on whether or not that also lim- allows them to do it from the moon. Now, I know that they can because that they can also do it from meteorites, regardless of whether or not the meteorite is metal or just rocky. So again, it's more like natural earth elements or earth-like elements. As for mm. other particular things, yeah. So uh, in other words, yes, you could technically do that. But it's there's two things with that. First one is how strong is your power? Can you actually do that? Second one is, can your power actually control that? And finally is, is your range that great that you can reach the moon from the Earth? Um, And also, how much of the moon from the Earth? Because there's also the argument of like, yeah, you might be able to get just the slight edge of the moon so you can bring down a few rocks to fall down to Earth, but not the entire moon itself. But again, that, yeah... If someone could do that, obviously they could have the most powerful ability in the entire planet before, like, the se- a few seconds before the entire planet is wiped out. <laughs> what a way yeah. to go. It's just like, look what I can do! Oh no. The thing is, though, that the moon wouldn't even hit <laughs> the Earth sort of before vision. everyone died. Like, that's the, that's, the, that's the scary thing about it. The gravity fluctuations alone from the from the moon being pulled out of orbit or even forced into like our atmosphere, which is basically burn us up and kill us instantly. Um, if, if the tides haven't already flooded every country. <laughs> I've, I've changed my mind. It actually can get out of hand. Uh, <laughs> I'm like, like, I, I my statement that you've given me a perfect example of it being just, if not more dangerous than fire, I have other ways it could be worse. I have thought of more ways it could be worse now as well. That's okay, because we'll get back to that in a second, because the next thing I was going to say is there are actually a few things I wanted to talk about the main basis of this power. So, the main basis of this power is, just like a telekinetic, either with your mind or even kind of almost with body language, you are able to move and manipulate the Earth without necessarily lifting or picking up with your own physical body. You can do so regardless of the weight or if if there is a specific limitation, is based on the weight, but it is still greater than a specific limit of weight. For instance, you might be able to lift five or ten times that of your own body weight, or even greater than that. Uh, so it really depends. I have seen some shows where they actually do it where like it's just not even based on lim- uh, weight limits, it's just based on power, so it's like there is no necessary weight, it's more based on size, or there is a basis of weight, but it's more based on how powerful you are. So it's like eventually this will get better. Um, so those t- those two abilities are yeah. 
you know, within those within those realms. Uh, the next thing is there is the possibility of being able to control density. So, for instance, being able to make rocks more like sort of mud, and even making mud hard, hard like rocks. Uh, being able to wield and control it uh, like almost like almost as if like liquid, and then being able to like condense it like back into its rockish form. Uh, and finally, um, Terra, uh, Terra Endo, uh, I think it's Terra Kinetic Endo Sense, which basically allows the, um, well, it's Terra Kinetic Endo Sense, where basically it allows the user to feel the vibrations within their body and within the earth, and then as it comes back to them, they are able to see without needing to touch it. Others also do get Terran Sense, which allows them to also sense out the very element that they can control, meaning that they know what they can and can't manipulate. Uh, this seems to be more prominent in uh, Terra Kinetics than any other particular kinetic, which is kind of interesting, considering uh, we didn't really talk about this with Hydrokinetics, but they don't often get to sort of know, in 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 history anyway, if anything's go by in fiction, they don't often get to sense water or sense liquids they can control. Um, and if so, oh. it's it's a lot it's a lot more it's a lot more feeble than than the terrakinetics. And like yeah, even if like in heat sense as well, there's a way that you can like control heat sense as well, or like mask it. Like Earth is literally all around you unless you're in like unless you're in the water it's very likely to be all around you so it's difficult to kind of escape it like the only way i think could could combat that is if you have like some aerokinetic ability and like not be on the floor so that would be like the only way to kind of escape the vision of an of an endokinetic <laughs> thing is though even then like even if you're in the water if you go down deep enough there is earth no matter where you go on the planet, there is Earth. Just get maybe, 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 some, maybe some miles away, maybe like beneath you, some hunt, like some meters away. But you will be able to reach it if you're strong enough. That would be amazing Even if you're in the air. Just drop a, you know, you... a terrakinetic into the ocean, and then it's sort of like, ha ha! I've, de- I've, you know, I have thwarted you, and then just this, you know, bit of coral infused rock just shoots up. <laughs> no, no. He drops, it drops in like a lake. You can't do not, can't do nothing now, can you? Just suddenly see the whole like the lake lift upwards as you like bowl like. <laughs> it is, it is, it is kind of interesting though because the amount of different levels of power that you can gain from it. Um, there's also one particular thing that I don't know if you guys have seen this before. Um, a terra connections can also sometimes have the ability to control dryness. Like they can actually have it where, like the earth that they control, the earth or sand that they control, can actually suck up moisture mm. and distribute okay. it to other plots. I've yeah. seen this a couple times. Um, I've not really seen that. Okay, per se. not like a big of. It makes sense because, like, if uh, you know, if. You know, if uh, water manipulators can like separate, you know, water from things, then like terrakinetics could like separate the solid from the liquid. So it's like kind of reverse. Like, I mean, it makes sense. On top of yeah. also being one of the most probably the most durable out of all of the elements that we've talked about as well, like physically sturdy durability. It's like if you if you go in front of someone and you like create a barrier of water, there is still a good chance that someone with enough strength could actually punch through it. But if you actually talk about a wall of stone or mud, the amount of strength that a person would need to actually break stone with their fist without causing serious damage to them, that they'd either have to be almost superhuman or actually superhuman to break through stone without breaking their own hand or damaging their own flesh. And even then, like, the endurance, like, you know, just creating wall after wall after wall after wall, you know, eventually, you know, even with super with super strength, you get tired out and it's like, oh, my God, please, no more. <laughs> just the juggernaut. Just how many walls have you made? <laughs> I can't be stopped. I mean, we'll see how many walls that I make until you actually change that, <laughs> change that way of thinking. <laughs> um, yeah. So 
we talked about this last week. Uh, the most weak and the most powerful. I think we've already talked about some of the most powerful, so we'll, we'll do the most weak and then we'll come to the most powerful. I'm actually going to say, like, the ability to control one grain of sand at a time. Like, the, the like that's all you can do is just one grain of sand at a time. However... I'm going to immediately skip from this point to the next point, which is the upgrade. It can also be like tiny shards of glass, tiny shards of whatever, but it's only one piece. The largest piece that you can control can be no larger than, I don't know, let's say, for instance, your biggest fingernail. Not your thumbnail, your biggest fingernail. Um, that's, uh, that's, that's pretty big, though. I got big yeah. fingernails. No, I don't mean <laughs> as in like they grow out. As in they cannot be, they cannot grow out any larger than like a specific point. So in other words, the fingernail that does not actually grow out further from your finger. So you couldn't go like, oh, well, actually, I've got like really long fingernails because I never cut them, and it's like therefore my power is better. It's like no, it's just the size of it. Still, that is the piece of that is the piece of rock slash glass that you can control. When you have that or even when you're just controlling a single grain of sand, you can then use it and manipulate it in any way, shape, or form in the terms of speed, velocity, strength, and power behind it, which even could allow you to actually have it where, like, when you throw it, launch it, fire it, manipulate it, it can even have the same speed and velocity and power behind it as a bullet, therefore allowing you to, like, tear through people's uh, armour, even with a tiniest grain of sand. It's just the same thing as the small drop of water thing from last week. Mm, mm, mm. This is going to be the entire thing as the next two weeks is just going to say oh, we're just going to get control of a really small thing and then it's just going to kill people by going through them really now, quickly. Another, another, really <laughs> weak, another really weak one is just a really simple one is you can see anything within the dirt beneath your feet so long as it, so long as it is within a let's say two meter radius. So in other words, oh, you basically... You're the human metal detector. Like, yeah. you're like, you know, you'd be an archaeologist or something. <laughs> <laughs> that's actually... No, that's actually way more cool... That's actually a way more interesting version. Yeah, no. The, the fact that you can feel all sorts of things within the dirt. It can be a massive yeah. range, but that's your only terrakinetic ability. Is like, I can sense anything that is within dirt or rock or sand. Anything else... That's it. <laughs> Wait, like, wouldn't it be great when you're just like, like trying to find where's the city of gold? Well, we'll just walk a bit. Oh, wait, there's a big cavern beneath us. That must be it. Or it's like, you know, oh, here, you know the lost treasure of Khartoum. Lost for thousands of years. No one will ever find it. Found it. There yeah. it is. See the gold. There. Right That's there. a big X written in the ground. <laughs> These two gold pillars. So, Terrible archaeologists. <laughs> So, so what about you guys then? Like a, a really weak, or at least a really minuscule version, or a, or a different version to it. I actually did really want to cool. talk about this. Uh, did want to talk about this around because I was researching terrakinetic users, yeah. and one of them is uh, Petra from the X Men. And like, I mean, she has way more power than this. But one of the cool things she can do, which I've not actually seen utilized uh, by my by anyone else, really who is a terrakinetic, is the ability to turn coal into diamonds by exerting so much pressure that's needed to actually create diamonds. Like That's how, you know, gemstones and uh, diamonds are created, is just by, you know, really creating such great pressure on Earth that it turns into this, you know, crystalline form. And that's how, that's what she manages to do to survive for a while. She's got no other marketable skills out an orphan on the street so she basically says oh, i'm just gonna turn some coal um into diamonds and like sell them to a pawn shop and say that to uh, you know that i just found them and that works for a while until it doesn't <laughs> and they find out what happened but uh you find out what she's doing but uh, uh, that still, would be cool that's still cool though that's really interesting i mean obviously obviously diamonds require a lot more than just that like but i like the fact yeah, yeah, and uh, but I like I do like the fact that it's like oh my powers basically create the perfect scenario to make a diamond from coal. I just I do yeah. like that. That is interesting. And that's like if that for my weak power, I would definitely use that because it's like yeah, I can't like uh, level buildings or anything, but I can you know <laughs> I can create level the economy. Like... Gus, darn it! <laughs> yeah, I mean. I mean, I should say, it's well known that diamonds are intrinsically worthless. As 
as is the man who made diamonds worth actually made them worth money he said that and they're intrinsically worthless which is kind of ironic considering they're one of the most durable minerals in the entire world. Especially because we can nowadays we can make diamonds. We can just it, make perfect diamonds from coal. We can do that now. It takes it, it takes do, a while though. Not too not too, not actually that long from what I can recall. <laughs> but we can do it. We have machines now that can do that. Less than the ones that a machine made. That's the thing. I mean, that's why they had like uh, you know, a lot. That, that's why they're worth a lot more if they're naturally occurring because they're more special that way. Whereas, like, if you just make them, there's no, like no, no worth to it. You can just do it, you know. But actually, the diamonds that are made in these things are actually better because they're perfect diamonds. Whereas the diamonds that are brought from the ground naturally are imperfect diamonds because they have grains of but, like sand and stuff in but them. The irony of the situation is because that they're natural and because that they are flawed, that makes them more natural. Therefore, makes them relatively more pr- I mean, pricey. Yeah, <laughs> no, it's not. It's, it's just because we've. Put, it's just because the the diamond industry have done that. Look up, look yeah. up. Adam ruins everything on on like wedding on like uh, weddings and like. Honestly, rings. dude, and you'll, I, and you'll I, find I love, out why I diamond. Love Adam ruins everything, and I have seen the thing that you're talking about. And honestly, I'll probably watch it again because you just reminded me how much I love Adam. <laughs> Adam ruins everything. And how 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 worthless diamonds are as a commodity beyond their. Ab- I mean, diamonds are diamonds are very useful for tools. Intrinsically worthless to edit for most. Well, I mean, I think, think like about that. it. It's 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 an object that is specifically, basically, the equivalent of looking. It's it's basically an object that looks like glass. A cubic zirconia and a diamond are almost exactly identical in the terms of, in fact, if not entirely identical in the fact of what they look like. But then, it's only because that diamonds are physically much some of the most durable objects in the entirety of the world. And it's just like, yeah, that's a really cool thing to have on a ring. That's the equivalent of having like, I don't know, like an AK-47 bullet on like on your like necklace. And it's like, why do you have that? Because it's one of the best rifles ever American, made. Joe. It, yeah, well, yeah. But it's like, oh, it's one of the best rifles <laughs> ever made. And it's like, well, first of all, like, yeah, but that you, you don't have the rifle. And second, like, it's, all that is is a bullet. Like, it... I mean, I don't, I don't get your analogy, Joe. Well, no, no, but, but if okay. you think about it, your value, is, your value in it is purely because that it's decorative. But ultimately, it was specifically designed for a, for a much more specific and practical purpose. And as you're saying, diamonds in this particular scenario are more, spe- more specifically made for a practical purpose. It's only because that we've... Turn them into almost that this is almost a glamorous object that people now buy them because they look pretty rather than actually thinking, well, this object here could actually be tipped on a drill that would allow it to like cave in some very dangerous kind of materials without there we say. breaking. Say diamonds them. are forever. <sighs> would you say never, never. diamond is unbreakable? Uh, okay, that reference. Yep. Okay. And before you ask, yes, that is a JoJo's reference. <laughs> sorry, sorry, for a, sorry for getting a slightly off center there with that comment about us being able to make diamonds and their intrinsic either, worth. Either way, I, either way, I mean, it, it it's not off topic in 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 one particular regard, which is that is an interesting weak power or weaker terrakinetic power. What about you, Sam? Well, I'm going to go for probably the film no one's seen, Avatar: The Last Airbender. Where... Yes, you're right. No one has seen it. Have they? I mean, I was going to be honest. I was going to go for the one where it takes like five people to lift a single rock. Oh my! Which dude, does happen? No, which I'm does getting, happen to it? I'm getting upset. Does happen in the movie? But I've got <laughs> no. I've, I've got seen it. it. Let me finish. <laughs> but I'm going to go for something else. Okay. I'm going to go for the other one where it takes five minutes of dancing, or not dancing. You know, taekwondo, or I can't remember what what style of martial arts they're doing in the movie. Something like that. It takes like five minutes of that before you act before any of the powers actually happen. It's just you moving your arms and dancing in a place. 
but it, for but it, a few that, minutes, that, and then that, suddenly that actually Earth does happens. happen. That does actually well, happen. No, 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 no. Yeah, I was actually... in, the, in the cartoon, it happens almost instantly. No, 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 no. no. What, I about... mean, what I mean is, is like that does actually happen in that scene that you're talking about with the whole thing of like there's five of them because all five of them dance about together and then just a very slow moving boulder kind exactly. of ominously like forms towards a, a guy, hits him, and he cut. It's not even a bot. It's like a slightly it's a large. It's, it's a, a slightly, slightly the size large of your hand. rock. <laughs> a rock the size of your hand. No, no, it's bigger, like but it, it, but it's still it's still very un much bigger. <laughs> it's it's like size of two hands joined together. It's you might as well throw the rock, really. Uh, you know, you don't need to throw a rock. At the y- yeah, the it's 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 basically it was about the half half the size of a guy's torso because when it hits him, it's like, oh man, that's actually quite a big rock. It would have been more impressive if they threw it because it's slowly gliding towards it. They might as well have just put it on wires at that point. I think it was that big. I also remember it being smaller. No, no, it is, it is still small. It like- it's still small, but it's just, it's not that, it's it's not that small. It's it's still I'm, small I'm enough. Just make sure. Yeah, <laughs> uh, either way, but like, <laughs> yeah, okay, fair enough. Yeah, what- that... No, but if I'd, I'd rather be like, like you just have to do that. Yeah, it is about the size of the. It's not even that big. I've got a picture of an eye. It is about the size of two hands joined together. Uh, let's it's pretty let's terrible. Yeah. Uh, oh damn, GIF. Yeah, I'm, yeah, like, it's GIFs are terrible. None of them are. It's yeah, it's not very big. If basically, if if you guys don't know what we're talking about, look it up because honestly, the. The the scene where a bunch of like there's about five or six earthbenders that just do this do this dance routine, and then a rock, slightly very slowly floats on over, and then gently hits this guy, and then he falls backwards, and yeah, I I get that the it's more the framing of the movie, but in all honesty, it, imagine how annoyed you would be is like if you had to flap your arms around for ten minutes before your powers then finally activated. And I mean I mean as in like a power that normally would activate upon instantaneous movement, not as in a power that you're stockpiling movement from. <laughs> oh. But yeah, it's like it is like it really is quite small. Like yeah, I could have thrown that rock and hit that guy. No, no, no okay, no, no, no. No, I wasn't wrong then. No, no, no. It's it is actually a little bit bigger than than two hands because like when it hits him, it is but around not much. The, it is around about the size of his torso. <laughs> like when it hits him. No, it's not. Yes, it is. No, it's not. I, I'm seeing the same well, thing. It's about the size of his torso. I'm sorry, but if you watch the scene, people, you'll see what I mean. It, it's about the size of. It's about the size of like like at, your at hand. The, the bit look, of like at the smallest, it's the size of a human head, and I mean like a fully grown human head. That's the that's the that's the smallest that I believe that it is based on what I'm currently seeing. It's basically, a baby head, really. From what it's I'm not, seeing. it's not a baby head. It, a it head. genuinely looks yeah. like a fully grown like human head. And Either way, don't watch that movie. It's crap. It, yeah, <laughs> it is. It, okay, so yeah. either way, they, I, they're very, they're very weak. That's that's the whole that's the whole joke I was going for. So I'm gonna say we'll go, we'll move on you, to the strongest, power... so that then we can actually just you know go go to the next. But we'll work on the strongest. So uh, in the terms of the strongest, obviously, Sam, you said about the moon thing. Uh, yeah, I, I I mean like like that that's quite that's quite powerful. And it is quite it is quite out there, but obviously obviously there's there's a few different ways that you could do this. Uh, one particular one is obviously like meteorite manipulation, but I'm going to say let's actually stick to the planet rather than uh, rather than intergalactic because at that point it's like oh well I can you know I can control the planets from thousands of light years away. <laughs> like no, we're gonna we're gonna specifically talk about this. I'd say um, obviously like I'm just gonna say this purely because that like I feel like we kind of have to. Um, the, just the just the ability to manipulate it. Let's say let's say even like um, let's say for instance you can manipulate up to fifty meters radius from you. So that means a hundred meters diameter from either side of you, uh, fifty meters away from you in any and all directions, and you can control and manipulate any and all things that are considered earthly materials. in, in the terms of rock, stone, mud, dirt, minerals such as gemstones. 
uh, and also let's say you know like other even even like man-made minerals and gemstones and stuff like that. I'd also then say the ability to actually sense them and sense vibrations through them. I'm going to say that particular power itself because. A 50 meter range doesn't sound that big, but when you can actually lift up a building, that's actually like a most like a house might be around about anywhere between 10 to 20 meters in the terms of its diameter. At that point, you can lift up a whole freaking house, and you being able to like even manipulate tarmac and concrete and you know stuff like clay and bricks and cement, like the kind of stuff that you can do is just ridiculous. So in other words, what I'm saying is like there's a limit to the range. But there's no limit as to the things that are considered roughly to do with rocky, cementy, stony sort of style of stuff. Now, obviously, as I said, nothing to do with metal. Once it is considered metal, plastic, wood, anything like that, it cannot and does not count. But either way, I still think that would be like it's it's mixing the whole concept, as, as Sam said earlier, from utility to wide variety and strength and power. Um, because literally if someone puts you into a corner in the, in the funny situation of, oh, I'm, oh, I'm, you've just thrown me into a jewelry store. Also, most of the, th- most of the displays are made of glass. I can now use the glass, but I can also throw a bunch of sapphires and emeralds at you. <laughs> so I just, I just find that quite funny. Then, like, imagine getting like stabbed in the face by a diamond necklace, like just, just, just all at once, just like. You know, getting it manipulated into like, into like shards, and like getting like the most expensive stabbing that you've ever had. <laughs> uh, the expensive stabbing. I mean, I don't really know. I mean, you two have like kind of covered like everything, including shouting at each other and scaring me because <laughs> you get so Good. heated. <laughs> Good. We need. We need to. Daddy and Just daddy need to sort more. this out. <laughs> Yeah, you need to if you want, in that fight. You really need to physically. You go for fight, my super strong one, or do you want to go for it first, Alex? Um, I really don't. I really don't know about my super strong one, to be honest. I mean, the only thing that I would think of is that, you know, it's sort of a variant on like what we talked about last week, where it's like, you could have like, you know, earth that is mixed with pretty much anything, like in liquid form as well. So you could like, you know, basically have no limit in changing it into its various forms. So, like, you'd be able to control mud. So, you'd be in mud. You'd be able to control magma. You'd be able to control, you know, glass and like everything. But it's like, um, the li- you know, you wouldn't be able to like. Ha- you could have like limited range and stuff, but you'd be unlimited in how you could use it. That would be what I think. Like, basically, you won't be able to reach for the moon, but you can like create, you know, pretty much. But if the moon, if the, if parts of the moon came to Earth, you'd be able to definitely manipulate it. Oh yeah. yeah. Oh, definitely. I think that's basically what you and I are sort of agreeing on is like a really cool and interesting, like really pow- what we would consider as a really powerful one without being the obvious, like, oh, I'm going to control the world itself. We're actually kind of saying like, basically it's the multifaceted form of terrakinesis because someone could just say, oh, it's only rocks and dirt. You can't control cement. You can't control this. You can't control that. You can't control minerals. It's only rocks and dirt and mud. That's it. And it's like, at that point, that, you know, that obviously is still quite powerful. But the abil- the sheer ability to just go, any natural rock-like or rock material is, or dirt material is basically up for grabs. And yeah. I just, yeah, I think that that's, that's a really powerful ability without necessarily basically being a god-level power. Like, I think that that's just one that definitely needs more looking into. Because, again... Th- Throwing someone into a situation where it's like, oh, there's the closest thing that you have to use is like, like ages away, and then I don't know. Say for instance, you get you get captured and you're in a metal prison and you have nothing and nowhere. The guard, the guard, like passes you by and you just notice something. You can sense something. It's something in their ring. As you then use your powers, you basically rip out the sapphire from their <laughs> from their ring, and now you have a piece of ammunition to use for later. Like. It's just that kind of interesting aspect of like anywhere and anything could be eventually used as a weapon so long as you're within the right confines. And even it just gives you so many different facets to it. Sorry, sorry, Sam, go on. 
I wasn't saying though, I just cut out there. So what's what's your what's your what's your OP one or, or super powerful one that you think that is interesting? Well, more or less unlimited range, but if we're only going but it only works on the planet Earth. As soon as you exit the planet Earth, like say you're sent to the moon, your powers don't work at all. Then you have to be like touching the earth for it to happen with both your hands. But you can manipulate it as you see fit. So if if you really wanted to, you could reshape the entire planet to look like a human being. Or like make it fly around the cosmos like a giant spaceship. I always feel like I always feel like those kind of abilities are I just feel like those kind of abilities... It'd probably be quite slow, <laughs> because you're I'm, trying I mean, to move the Earth. Yeah, yeah, it's, it's, it's Earth. purely because, obviously, like, the sheer size of it would just take a while. But yeah, I always feel like powers like that are always kind of interesting at first, and then when you really look at it, it's like, yeah. <laughs> not, I mean, we're not going for interesting. We're no, going no, for no, 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 There's no. a difference. <laughs> but I think, I powerful think, does not equal interesting. I think, it was, I think it was that thing of, I think it needed to be said. Uh, at that point, it, that that was yeah. The obvious one is like you know continental manipulation or entire planetary manipulation. Um, Just become Gaia, pre- pretty much. Yeah, um, the Earth. Um, okay, so I'm going to say interesting additions or interesting perks added to or used with terrakinesis. One particular one that I'll say is sand. Uh, I've actually seen a, a, a terrakinetic, or uh, I guess, a sand manipulator, being able to like shoot small amounts of sand into someone's wounds and slightly control aspects of their muscles. Whoa! Um, so, okay, like, actually weird. slowing their movements down, or even irritating their muscles so that they actually feel great deals of pain. Um, Another one is uh, fusing and condensing um, sand to such a degree and even making it basically rub against itself so much that eventually it heats up from the friction and actually creates either glass or electrical charges. So, yeah, I, like that's just kind of interesting. It's kind of cool. Uh, any, any kind of interesting abilities, add-ons, perks that you guys can think of? Well, I, I mean, I, I did create, you know, I did think of creating a character. I don't know if I'll ever use him, but I was going to, like, create a character once for a uh, sound campaign called The Architect, who basically had the ability of uh, terrakinesis, but also the perfect ability to shape things, like, absolutely perfect, like, completely plan it out and then create it instantly. So he'd have the ability to literally create a house within his mind and then create it in the real world, and then drop a house on somebody. Or just, like, you know, create a house for someone to live in. Like, all, you know, just basically complexity to the, you know, to the nth degree. So it isn't just, like, you know, throwing, flinging mud. It is, like, do, you know, doing these incredible constructions. You know, and, yeah, if that makes any sense. I've just, no, uh, that does. That's, uh, yeah, that's, that's interesting. What that's about you, what Sam? I do. Any extra uh, powers or add-ons or abilities or perks? Uh, uh, I think most. Trying to think of just Earth things that already make it not. That's trying to make it add additional. Earth is mostly very powerful. Uh, I I say. Oh, I know. Oh, I guess you could say like the ability to like fly on Earth. I don't think you can do that in this game, as far as I can remember. As far as I you know, can. Earth stays on the ground. You can. can't go full. Oh, so just, you can't go like full Terra. You you can. It's just that there's specific limitations because of it. It's like you can't have it where you make an infinite like flight platform. Like if you want to fly above the ground, you have to have a platform of Earth underneath your feet, and it pushes off of Earth itself. If there's no earth beneath the platform, it will then eventually fall because that is your only thing that you're able to control and push it off from. Um, you can make it lift and levitate, but you won't be able to obviously make yourself lift and levitate at the same time. I can't um, think of what I can think of. I can think of something now that now that you bring that up. You know, magnetism. 
Yes. But with rocks. You can make you can magnetize earth. Oh make oh like as in make actual just like non metal rocks magnetized. Almost like as if you're yeah, so, like like a like well basically a gravity manipulation. Somewhat, but mostly because but then you can just have like, a trap. On you can have like earth. a trap that's like, oh, like oh that that part's magnetized. The 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 guy just coming over. Well I'm a knight filled with armor. Fuck flies back. Stuck to the ground. Well, that was your own undoing. I don't know. Or I just, feel, I feel or, like... or, or, or like, or you can have like a like a flying kingdom that's that's kept by magnets, like different magnetism. I kind of feel like, like that is that is quite interesting. To be fair, like just entirely altering how Earth even normally works, and just actually going like, oh, but it's it's just mud. It's just dirt. It's just a rock. Yeah, well, it acts like iron sand. And it's just now sticking to you, or oh yeah, it just acts like a giant freaking metal magnet. And it's like, but that doesn't make any like sense. Magnetism. And it's like, it doesn't have to. That's my power. <laughs> I'm like magnetizing rocks, and I just, I just, I love it's the a superpower. Idea. It doesn't make sense. I mean, like most of them don't, and they don't need to. We just need to understand the rules of it, and there we go. Away we go. We don't need to know the physics of it. We don't need to know how exactly this person is able to have that power. We just know he does. And therefore, we're moving on. I yeah, I think of disbelief. Exactly, you have to suspend it to some degree. Uh, why can this person decay stuff from just touching it? Um, yeah, I, no, I think that's kind of interesting. I'd say, uh, I'd say with this power, another really cool one to have uh, to add with it is, um, weirdly enough. I'd say I'd say this might seem a bit weird. I'd say um, obvi- obviously nature manipulation, like the ability of like being able to manipulate rocks, earth, and dirt, uh, but then also being able to manipulate plants and speak with nature. You could basically make your own forest. Um, you could be a walking forest creator, um, and so on and so forth. That that would be really cool. But I think I think intangibility, being able to phase through. Like mud, dirt, rock, cement, concrete, stuff like that. And then just being able to like cover someone in like a load of stuff and just pass through it, take all their stuff and then like pass through it again. <laughs> like there's so many really cool ways that you could do it. Hello? Uh, no, no, no. We're, we're still here. We're just, we we're have here. like, we have, I think with that we have like exhausted. The possibilities right now. No, <laughs> like, I, I think it's no, yeah. covered everything. Like I think. Earth I mean, manipulation. If we Earth manipulation is quite powerful. Obviously, as you said, you can control avalanches, mudslides, uh, so on and so forth. I would say one last thing that I'd probably be remiss not to say is orogeny, the ability to be able to create and manipulate mountains, like. Good. Because you're going somewhere completely different there. That kind of power has so much gravity to it that you can shape an entire country, that you can shape an island, that you can... But, and also, if you think about it, person that can have that power would possibly be the strongest type of Earth manipulator outside of continental manipulation. Like, I think after mountainous manipulation or orogenous manipulation... It would then be. It would then it would then go on to. Like content and continental, or at least a countrywide manipulation, which is again ridiculous. I think I think that is I think that is it. I th- I think we've sort of covered everything in terrakinesis as as a whole: the ability to sense, the ability to manipulate, and the ability to sort of dive and delve. I'd say the one last ability that I, I notice uh, quite a lot is um, the ability to sort of like make rock uh, less solid on themselves. Like they can pass through it like as if it was almost like sand or liquid or something. Which is kind of interesting. Uh, but make it more dense for other people. Um, oh, there is another one as well for um, uh, based a bit on like what Toph can do but also the sonic showers. Uh, in Star Trek, where you can like remove, you know, dirt and soil from the body, mm. you know, as like without using water for cleaning yourself, it's like literally perfectly 
get rid of like you know um, dirt particles from your body for ultimate cleanliness. Oh no, abs- absolutely. Like it, yeah. I'd I'd say I'd say yeah. No, that's, that's absolutely true. Like the ability to manipulate dirt and dust from your body and just like eh, well, I'm clean and just like boosh, that's it. It's now gone. It would also it would also make stuff like if you have a day out at the beach and you bring a bag with you, it just makes that so much easier as well. Just like, oh well, I'm not gonna be clearing this out of it for the next seven years. Like you just go, well, all all of that gone out now. You will yeah. never have you you will you will never have the have sand trapped in uncomfortable areas because it's automatically gone. Foosh. Hmm. Okay, I think that's the most OP power, actually. I've decided. <laughs> I don't know about that, but... Although although I guess you could say the most amount of power and control behind the smallest amount of things could actually still be used in that one. Like As as we obviously said, like oh, a small droplet could basically be more powerful than a rifle bullet. Um, instead, actually having it as like, okay, you're covered with dirt and dust. I then just start constricting your body, like as if I am a telekinetic, uh, because all the dirt in your body is now sort of within my control, and it is now it now has the force behind it that is stronger than like a basically a large fist grabbing hold of you. Oh man! And if you want to like, uh, if you want to like introduce, you know, uh, virus, if you want to contaminate an uncontaminatable area, that's it. You just like take any form of dust from an, any number of people and just concentrate it on you know, one area, and you've just poisoned a bunch of people. Congratulations, you're a monster. <laughs> you could have used this power for good, but instead you decided to kill children. Uh, so I believe you've chosen death. Well, yeah, I think, I think that's everything that we could possibly have spoken about on this one. It, I think so, yeah. It's... It's kind of, kind of a bit of an open and closed case, almost quite anticlimactic, really. Um, I guess I guess the one last thing is kind of archetype. Uh, usually, earth manipulating uh, arch- the archetype for that is basically super sturdy, super strong. Doesn't really take nobody's BS. Um, it's quite straightforward. Doesn't always necessarily mean a lack of intelligence, but that archetype is quite stereotypical that uh, an earth manipulating terrakinetic is not often the smartest character that doesn't mean that there aren't ones out there that aren't smart it's just that those are the more common ones that we see i think it's also like you know a, a stereotype is that they are literally grounded you know they're not just physically and they can control ground but they are like grounded characters like they're not really you know, they're very practical, very sort of, like, literally down to earth. I think it's just the association of their powers. Like, they're not very sort of, like, they're not very flaky. I mean, that doesn't apply in all cases, but a lot of terrakinetics are, you know, are like that. Yeah, I've also have not seen that many terrakinetics in fiction enough to get a good stereotype of them. <laughs> I mean, literally, if you watch well, either like... of the Avatar series, then you can basically get at least one. I mean, beyond that, I mean, because that's one series viewpoint of Terra. Terra is kind of flighty um, in a lot of different sh- series of films and shows that I've seen her in. So yeah. I honestly oh, I don't... don't read the comic book, by the way, where she's completely evil. I mean, again, too late, but like. And... The... No, <laughs> Oh, did you did you read the comic? I've I've read one of the comics that she's in. Oh, like the original, the original, the original Terra like betrayal Judas and what's it called like the Judas Judas contract. Yeah, where she is straight up just is in a lo- is in a relationship with the, Slade Wilson. With, as in like, as in like that kind of relationship. Yeah. A, I, I'm taking off the clothes and getting into bed to get the relationship. Yeah, and she yeah, is Judas, still like a minor. Judas contract is kind of messed up in many different ways. Although I will say I don't mind the animated film adaptation that they did of it. It was actually quite interesting and still quite tasteful to some degree. She's she's still a psychopath on that. Oh yeah, they straight definitely. Up, yeah, and she straight up hates everyone in the group, especially the friend. <laughs> 
I think it's Beast Boy that she's sort of like quite negative towards, despite actually him being the most helpful. But yeah, that's another thing. Like they're quite set in their ways, uh, and that's the whole point of like being sturdy and stubborn as a rock. But yeah. I guess that's pretty much everything that we needed to sort of talk about, really. Um, that was Terrakinesis. Sorry for, a, quite weirdly enough, a short one uh, for us. Because instead of it being an hour and a bit, it's actually less than an hour. It's about, about 50 minutes. But if you guys enjoyed it, then please do subscribe and look for more of our videos. We do these... Well, we try to do these videos... Once a week, a minimum, as we talk about different powers in fiction and we talk about different tropes. Next week will be, I want to say, pyrokinesis. Oh, because it's water, then it's earth, then it's fire, then it's air. Yeah, that's the, that's yes. the series, the, the Avatar: Last Airbender series. Le <laughs> things. Yeah. So yeah, yeah. So so if you guys didn't get it, yeah, we're 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 doing it in that order because big fan boys. Uh, so <laughs> yeah, fire, well, fire is good. Fire is good. Yeah, uh, uh, basically we we we're, we're all just really massive fans of 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 uh, of nerdiness. And one of the things is like I don't know I don't know about you, Sam, but I know that Sa like Alex and I are like really big fans, like nerdy fans of Avatar. Yeah, <laughs> I, I liked Avatar, and even though that I dislike like the show Cora, I still watched like 90% of it. So therefore I, I must've been getting something out of it for a while. Either that or I was just, hate I watched wa either that or I was hate watching. It was like 10 episodes of it. I stopped watching it. I think like the first like awkward kiss thing happened. And then oh, it I got like the so episode much better going, after that. Yeah. Like, you know, the no, first series. Is no, it like, doesn't sound. Like, I am promising. No, actually, I remember, the exact, I remember the exact episode I quit. It was, I think when she's having the nightmare of losing all of her powers. Remember correct? I think that's the episode I ended on, I believe. Oh, yeah, yeah, yeah. That's the bad time ended on. <laughs> I mean, it's, I it's, a, it's a bad show. I, just, I, just kind of, I don't know why I gave up. <laughs> Good show. I think it was just because no one, nothing was gripping me. Yeah. I mean... It I won't change. Know. Nothing will ever change <laughs> about that. Oh my god, like, all of you, like, just before the podcast, you were just, like, we would, we were just sort of, like, bullying Sam for not liking Castlevania, but now that, like, you and Joe share an opinion, Joe's like, yeah, you're correct, Sam, you're never not correct. Yeah, yeah Sam, you're, you're, not, you're, not, never, not, you're never I mean, I shall say correct. this, I'm not saying it's a bad show, I'm just saying it's incorrect for me. This is a no, big difference. I, I will say, I will say this. I, I I joke about it being a bad show. I actually the only thing that I don't like is funny enough the way that they treat Cora as a specific character, and I'm this is possibly the trope that is going to get me a lot of lot of hate. But I don't really like the whole trope of the female character is only a really strong character because they're always getting the, the uh, ever-living daylights kicked out of them. That doesn't make a compelling character. Sure, there's an interesting way of being able to create development out of a character that is not yet able to move forward until they get strong enough, especially if they are getting the ever-living daylights out of them, but when that is literally the theme for three freaking seasons, it's kind of a bit of a mess and I just gave up yeah. halfway through season four because it was like just talking about Adrian. <laughs> uh... <laughs> <laughs> I mean, you know, I mean I'm just I'm just saying, look, like, I like Adrian like I like Cora. You know? <laughs> so I hope that he survives. I <laughs> the look, damning sign. His, his, <laughs> his the damning this. Indictment. I I like I like Adrian, a character that was made by not a professional story writer, and I still enjoy them way more I than I do. Joe. Oh, sorry, yeah, sorry. Have you ever been paid for your story writing, Sam? I mean, not by... Wait. <laughs> There's a question I'm not... I might have at some point. So un until, the, until then, I am still going to keep that statement there. That is still... In my, in, in my current viewpoint, in my current perception of it, a fact... <laughs> No, but like either way, like like we'll we'll get back to this because obviously we'll we'll talk about this uh, maybe another time when we actually talk about these kind of tropes 
what makes you know what makes an interesting or what makes a compelling character. The one thing that I will still to my to my grave keep is a character a character always being beaten up towards an inch of their life that solely alone does not make an interesting character that does not make a compelling character another particular thing that does not make a compelling character is just solely like that on its own merits that their character is oh they're, they're so interesting well show us something interesting don't tell us how interesting they are show us um because obviously, like, if this is not the most interesting part of their life, why aren't you showing it to us? I'm not saying that that's necessarily something that happens to Korra, because to be honest, I don't think any of her training is supposed to be all that interesting. <laughs> like, but I will say, like, in Korra, there are some amazing moments in it. I enjoy I enjoy the villains a lot more than I enjoy any of the main characters, except from Bolin. Uh, but, you know... I'm the kind of guy that thought that Sokka was probably one of the best characters in that show, and I actually did like a deep dive with, uh, I think it was like me, me and Kane did like a deep dive on like talking about like how Sokka has basically got the greatest, uh, character development out of every single character in the show. Um, so maybe at some point I might record that and we'll actually talk about that, but I don't know. But yeah, before he decided, you know, one day I need to. Sword as opposed to being the best boomerang man that ever existed. <laughs> I mean, I've I know that. I mean, I've I've seen the Justice League. I know Captain Boomerang is the best character ever. <laughs> I mean, you're almost not wrong. I mean, the only the only the only the only one who beats Captain Boomerang is obviously Condiment King. But you know, <laughs> I mean, no, I mean, obvious. No, 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 the only one that could beat the only one that could beat. You know, Captain Boomerang is of course Packrat. Yeah, exactly. I mean, oh, you know, yeah. Packrat, the king of trash. Yeah. Well, no, also known no, as no, also known no, as no, Taika Waititi, no. because I completely forgot. Like, if you guys haven't seen the Suicide Squad movie, Packrat is actually played by Taika Waititi. <laughs> yeah. I, mean, to be honest, I was just referencing. I was just referencing the Batman episode where all these characters yeah. came from. I didn't actually know he was in that. <laughs> no, yeah, he's, he's, he's in the new Suicide Squad Mom. movie. I, I, I love that. I love that so much. Please hey, guys, tell me the third one's also there. Just I can't remember. It was like uh, the one no, that's, that's like a weird there, wrestling. Nah, that's the only um, one, mate. Nah. Anyway, it was like Wonder Mop or something. Thank you for watching and or listening to this podcast. I don't know what you'd be watching, but thank you for listening to this podcast while doing whatever you were doing. If you enjoyed this, please like and subscribe, and also leave a comment. We'd like to hear your opinions. Is there anything about terrakinesis or earth manipulation that we missed out? Tell us, and specifically inform us about what we may have missed. Because I know that the internet loves to share its opinions and in no way say anything harsh or mean about any of the particular people on the panel. But if you guys have anything to say, I'm sure we'll listen to it. As for... <laughs> This is a terrible outro. As for anything that you guys would like to listen to next, let us know in the comments as well, because we would like to hear from you. I am at Animite Tales. This is Animite Tales. And of course, we have at Obscuracom as well, if you'd also like to ask Obscuracom, why exactly is at Animite Tales not replying to any of my Twitters? I don't know if that actually is ever a thing that has ever been asked of anyone, but there we go. Um, thank you very much, both to Obscuricom and to at the Sam uh, for, <laughs> for <laughs> at the Sam. I don't, I don't, I don't think I have Twitter. You don't have Twitter. I, just, I don't know why I just called you the at the Sam. Uh, but either way, uh, thank you both of you for, for again joining me with this episode and we will get back with Pyrokinesis next time. So take care and have a wonderful night. Bye! See you in the future! And as always, ciao ciao for now.